First appearing in 1886, Nick Carter, master detective, who had such superhuman strength that he could lift a horse with ease while a heavy man is seated in the saddle, is considered a precursor to modern superhero stories. Raised from a child to be a master detective, the character has gone through many variations, from a detective with preternatural strength in memory to a classic film noir hard-boiled detective to a super spy. The character was a staple of dime and nickel pulp novels, radio shows, television programs, and films. Thrilling Detective website estimated that Nick Carter had appeared in over 4,000 novels, comic strips, films, and radio shows by 1949, and speculated that there was probably more Nick Carter adventures than those of any other fictional detective. But as exciting as the fictional character Little Remembered Today was, his abilities seemed to pale next to his namesake. A real detective who solved more than 650 crimes in a brief seven-year career between 1901 and 1908. The real Nick Carter skills were so impressive that he was called in on the most difficult cases of the day. If he arrived at a crime scene, it would draw huge crowds. When Nick Carter was described in the newspaper, it was almost always associated with the terms the famous or the celebrated Nick Carter. What's more? Nick Carter, the real detective Nick Carter, had undeniably and documented superhuman abilities. Abilities so amazing that they wildly exceeded what any normal human detective could possibly do. Nick Carter was quite possibly the most famous bloodhound in history. Bloodhounds are large scent hounds, originally bred for hunting deer or wild boar. As a scent hound, they have shown a particular ability at tracking human scent, and have been used for that purpose at least since the Middle Ages. Believed to be descended from hounds once kept at the Abbey of St. Hubert in Belgium, French speakers know the breed as the Chien de Saint Hubert. They have had, at times, a fearsome reputation, with, for example, a terrifying scene in the theatrical version of Uncle Tom's Cabin portraying a terrified Eliza being pursued by vicious hounds. That scene damaged the reputation of the breed, but in fact, bloodhounds do not appear in Harriet Beecher Stowe's novel at all, and she describes the slave chasing dogs as bulldogs. In fact, the breed was likely not imported into the United States until after the Civil War, and breeds used for hunting slaves likely had little bloodhound heritage. The breed is, in fact, very friendly, and when used in hunting, are used to catch a trail, but not used in the kill. Popular Science Magazine described the breed's temperament in their July 1935 issue. Tracking is a game to them, and they haven't the slightest ill will towards the ones they follow. As one aficionado of the breed explains, if you are caught by a bloodhound, your greatest risk is that it may lick you to death. Volney Gilbert Mulliken was born in Kentucky in 1869. He became a breeder of bloodhounds, and his hounds were used in a number of celebrated cases. Of his hounds, Nick Carter, named after the Pulp Fiction detective, was the most famous and most celebrated. A large dog with an exceptional earridge of 23 inches tip to tip, Nick Carter's first case was in 1901, when the dog was just one year old. The dog was put on the scent of a man who had criminally assaulted a young school teacher as she walked home. The dog followed the man's trail several miles, and then directly up a stair and to the man, sleeping in his bed. The man was then identified by the victim. Among his odd cases, Nick Carter was credited with following one of the shortest trails in bloodhound crime detection history. When James R. York was murdered in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky in 1905, police were baffled. Mr. York did not seem to have any enemies, and they could not divine a motive. When Mulliken and Nick Carter were called to the scene, Nick Carter led them 106 feet to Mr. York's brother, who confessed to the murder and was sentenced to life in prison. Demonstrating the gentleness and utility of the breed, Nick Carter was brought in on a case where a toddler had been missing 27 hours. Mulkin and Nick Carter were called and arrived on the scene in the middle of the night. Nick immediately caught a scent and took off, followed by Mulliken and the girl's father. The dog went so fast that the men stumbled and dropped their lantern. By the time they caught up with him, he was with the little girl, who had become entangled in some brambles. Her arm was around Nick, who was affectionately licking her face. Nick Carter was most famous, however, for finding scents that were seemingly too old to find. In one case, he tracked down a pair who had murdered a woman in her home, 56 hours after the crime. Following the scent 26 miles, the pair confessed to the crime. In his most celebrated case, he followed a scent to find an arsonist that was a stunning 106 hours old. 
Nick Carter had a significant impact on crime in Kentucky, where he mostly operated, helping to tamp down long-standing blood feuds and showing so much skill at finding illegal stills that reportedly bootleggers put a price on his head. Nick Carter's cases became central to state decisions regarding the admissibility of bloodhound evidence in criminal trials. In 1907, Mulliken took a position with the Lexington, Kentucky Police Department, and Nick Carter and another of his dogs were officially hired as officers. Nick Carter's legs gave out in 1908, and he died shortly after retirement. His death made newspapers nationwide. V.G. Mulliken continued breeding bloodhounds and solving crimes. He eventually left the Lexington Police Department and formed his own detective agency. He took risks himself. He was nearly killed when he was shot while trailing a suspect, and was shot at several more times. He said that he also put his life at risk defending people his dogs found from lynch mobs, believing they deserved a trial. He died in 1931 at the age of 61. He is credited in helping to build the popularity of a breed that still serves law enforcement, helping to find fugitives, missing persons, and people trapped after disasters. If you enjoyed this History Guy short, then feel free to click that like button, subscribe to our channel, and check us out on Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and our merchandise on teespring.com.